First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Doc, uh, it is our history of of handling anything that was abnormal, um, including a child without a parent. Our history is, is, is not very pretty. No, I think you're absolutely right. We have, you know, the, some of the things that we did uh, in the past that were passed off as, you know, medicine or, you know, quote-unquote taking care of people is really, um, you know, it would, is, is absolutely what should have been criminal at the time and is absolutely criminal now. And, you know, I can, I, I can only say that we have, we have learned and evolved away from that, um, yeah, yeah. you know, and in, in ways that I think are really positive. Um, yeah, I don't know if you heard much of, uh, of Ruth's story, but um, uh, it, it is incredible. No, I, I, I was listening, and it is, it, you're, in, incredible is exactly the right word for it. It is, it is f- incredible and phenomenal. Um, you know, and she is obviously such a strong, a strong person to have been able to, uh, you know, to, to live through that and to really what it sounds like is actually grow from it to be, yeah, yeah. be the person that she is now. So, so, so good for her, and I'm, I am so sorry that that happened to her. You know, it's um, it's interesting that uh, some of the, the, as you say, some of the medical procedures that we did, in this case, it looks like things were being done to curb her behavior. Um, it's a wonder that damage, permanent damage wasn't done to the point where um, it, it may have prevented her from from accomplishing a, a, a full life like she has. It's a wonder she wasn't destroyed from all of this. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, you know, what I what I would say is that what was done to her was not in the name of medicine. I don't right. know what they called it at the at the time. Yeah, it was yeah. certainly not in the name of medicine. It was in the name of it was in the name of behavior control, mm-hmm. um, and that is something that you know we we understand a lot better. Um, you know, in terms of how to how to you know talk to people and you know ways to de-escalate things that are you know for for people that are truly you know behaving you know, are, are having difficulty controlling their behaviors. Yeah, in this yeah. case, this wasn't about, it didn't sound like this was about controlling, you know, bad behavior or, you know, behaviors that are disruptive or dangerous. This was this was just about controlling people. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, Mike's saying this morning, unfortunately, due to the institutionalization issues we had, we now have swung completely in the other direction where we simply just dump people with mental issues out on the street and think we're being compassionate. Can you talk about that? And that is a problem right now. And we're seeing that spill over into the problems we have with police because we're expecting so much more out of our out of our law enforcement. Um, it, it it seems like we've we've completely swung in the other direction. Yeah. So this is this is something that's really been going on for really for several decades. I would say starting in the 80s or 90s when when you know there was a lot of uh, evaluation of long term institutionalization and was that really the right thing for people, you know whether it was with mental illness or with uh, disabilities, whatever it was. Yeah. And 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 it was felt that we could do a better a better job for them um, if if we didn't you know have them housed in residential institutions and and I believe that that is true for the vast majority of those populations. However, to your point, you can't just say, oh, we're going to stop you know residential um, uh, facilities, we're going right. to close them down without without doing the investment that it takes. To, to promote the community-based um, um, resources, you know, and, and also to truly identify those people that would really benefit most from being in a residential facility. There yeah. are still people who, who, you know, based on, you know, based on, you know, what is going on with them, you know, whether it's severe mental illness, whether it's, you know, severe developmental disabilities, where they truly, you know, cannot um, uh, uh, understand or control their own behavior, then then we can do that humanely in the right environment. Right. Having right. it on the str- having them in the community where where those resources just don't exist, and we haven't really done the investment that is required to to take care of them, yeah. you know, becomes becomes very problematic. Wow. 
Uh, okay. Um, it, it, it is, you're right. It's just a, it's not an easy, it's a very complex problem. So it's not easy to solve, but you know, one would think that uh, we've reached a point in, uh, in human and, and, and our development as human beings to find a way to do the best we can. And that's gotta be far better than what we did back in the thirties, forties and fifties. Oh, that's that. Yeah. That is absolutely true. That 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 goes without saying. It, uh, uh, again, what 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 Ruth went sh- went, went through was um, the only word that I can think of is abhorrent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 even with what was known at the time, uh, was still abhorrent. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the the cover of the book has uh, when she was uh, first dropped off in 1934. At the uh, at the house of uh, Good Shepherd here in Utica, and then uh, her admittance into the facility in in Syracuse in 1953. But uh, it, when you look at her picture, it's unbelievable. It is a defiant little girl who, let me tell you something, she wasn't going to break for anything and for anyone. And you can see her that stubborn look on her face, which is probably. How she survived? That's that's probably how she survived, Doc. Yeah, there is there is something about her her makeup about you yeah, know, yeah. and and I don't pretend to know what that is, but there was something about her makeup that actually allowed her to not only to survive but to actually grow, you know, even even suffering those those things yeah, through the, yeah. in, into the person that she is now, which is really fantastic. Uh, she did say that uh, on her way out that um, that the one thing that uh, that she learned is that she would never allow um, anyone to do to her children what was done to her, and if they tried, she would have killed them. Uh, and I think she's completely being honest and telling the truth there. So uh, just an amazing story. All right, uh, we only have a few minutes, and I didn't do our free money question either. I will do it today, though. Uh, we'll, we'll do it next hour. Um, I wanted to ask you, Doc, on what's going on with the CDC. Um, uh, they're meeting today on uh, the inflammation issues, that we're hearing about the heart inflammation with the, with the vaccine, uh, the nursing nursing home death report, and also the scientist in Seattle that's claiming that uh, 13 cases of uh, of COVID nineteen early on uh, before we really even were were I guess these were the first ever cases were somehow deleted off a of Google Doc. Uh, I wonder if that uh, there's a lot of suspicions about that, but. Uh, what are your thoughts on what the CDC is going to be doing today? Yeah, so the CDC is doing a very deep dive on the on the myocarditis or the inflammation of the heart that has been uh, reported uh, uh, in in conjunction with uh, people getting uh, the messenger of RNA uh, viruses. Uh, it is a relatively small number of people, uh, and thankfully, you know, it has not caused severe problems. There have been some people who have been hospitalized, but yeah. nobody who has had, you know, severe ongoing problems related to it. Uh, but, but it is real, and, and so you, we, we need to understand it. You know, what they're going to be looking at is as much data as currently exists to understand, you know, are there pre-existing conditions? Are there, you know, uh, types of, um, you know, is there, are, are there genetic markers? Yeah, yeah. Is it related to gender? Is it related to age? Is it related to, you know, people having diabetes or whatever, um, you know, that, that we can say, okay, so these are people that, that we can give more informed information and uh, uh, to about about getting the vaccine. I will say that you know all things that are known, and this is in the general population, not drilling down to any specifics. That you know, getting the disease as we know it is much worse than getting any of the vaccines than the than the repercussions from any of the uh, vaccines. So well, uh, it is yeah. so in everybody's best interest to to get the vaccines. Not to say that we won't learn that. Yep, there is a yep. population, a subpopulation of patients who should really avoid the vaccines, and we need to understand what that, what that means. And if you can't get the vaccine, uh, what we're learning is you want to make sure you're protecting yourself so that you do not get the virus. Um, a report out today says virtually all deaths right now that are taking place um, because of COVID-19 are people who are unvaccinated. Absolutely true, and 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 this Delta variant, uh, which started in uh, India and is now spreading across the the yeah. world, 
Um, you know, is, is, I, this is my prediction. It is going to become the dominant variant within the United States in a very short period of time. And for those people that have not yet been fully vaccinated, yep. their best protection is to get fully vaccinated. Doc, we appreciate it. Thank you so much.